The next presenter is Dr. Shigeki Matsunaga. The title of his talk is Carbon Carbon Bond Forming Reactions Under Proton Transfer Process From Asymmetric Catalyst to CH Functionalization. Please. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, first of all, I also would like to thank uh, Professor uh, Yamamoto Sensei, Suzuki Sensei, and Banyu Foundation for their great efforts uh, to keep uh, the high activity of MBLA for 10 years. Uh, it was really a nice experience for me, uh, and I ran quite a lot during the lectureship tour. So I think today it's my duty to talk towards younger generations and how the MBLA lectureship uh, affected me to start new project. So uh, today's title is uh, rather wrong, uh, CC bond forming reactions and the proton transfer process from asymmetric catalysis. This is a, the achievement in MBLA. And then I change the chemistry gradually to CH functionalization chemistry. So let's start. This is the summary slide of the MBLA 2010. At that time, uh, I was uh, working on the design of multi-nucleating chiral ligands and their applications in multi-metallic or bimetallic or trimetallic or multi-metallic cooperative asymmetric catalysis. By using the multi-metallic catalyst, uh, it's by using its intramolecular cooperative fashions, I can successfully control the positions of nucleophiles and ele electrophiles precisely, so uh, we achieved high enantio and diacetyl selectivities in variety of reactions. And I, I, first, I'd like to show you some uh, recent progress in bimetallic uh, catalysis. Recently, I'm focusing on the uh, use of bimetallic sheaf-based catalysis, this one. And because there are still too many things to do, well, we are performing several reactions. And because the stereo differentiating ability of the bimetallic sheaf based catalyst is extremely high, so even a subtle difference like a normal propyl and ethyl can be recognized perfectly with our catalyst. So we succeeded in the asymmetric azirizine ring opening reaction with perfect enantial selectivities. And we also succeeded in application to the natural product synthesis. And by using our catalyst, uh, and by using the double micro reactions for the construction of vicinal quaternary carbon stereo centers, uh, we accomplish very uh, concise total synthesis of natural products. After the MBLA lectureship, uh, I wondered, how can we expand our research beyond inolate chemistry? Because these achievements, all of them are based on the inolate chemistry. So I wanted to expand my research beyond the inolate chemistry, but still keeping our research philosophy. So in our catalyst, uh, in our reaction design, import, there are two important things. Uh, so let me explain that. First, uh, catalytic generation of nucleophilic active species is important uh, in our designs. So for example, in this case, the catalyst deprotonates this proton to generate, generate the vinyl gas inolate like this. And then after the CC bond forming reactions, uh, reaction ends up with uh, proto demetallations. So overall, the reaction proceeds, CC bond forming reaction proceeds under simple proton transfer process from here to there to realize high atom efficiency. So uh, based on these two concepts, uh, I was looking for some literatures and in 2011, uh, two very uh, attractive papers appeared from uh, two independent groups, but on the same reactions, by using the rhodium-3 catalysis. By using the rhodium-3 catalyst, the addition of two phenylpyridines to imine proceeds nicely. Although it is, was a racemic reaction, it was still quite interesting for me, uh, because the reaction proceeds first by the CH activation, or I should say deprotonations with the rhodium catalyst to generate nucleophilic organ rhodium species, and then addition to imines ends up with uh, proto-demetallations. So the CC bond forming reaction proceeds under proton transfer process. So we thought it's really a nice starting point for us to 
do something different. But needless to say, at the stage of 2011, it was too late for us to use Rhodium-3. Because uh, at that time, uh, Rhodium-3 had been widely studied by many chemists in the world, especially the pioneering works by Miura and Sato, professor at Osaka University. So anyway, it was too late for us to use the same catalyst. So at that time, uh, Dr. Yoshino in our group, who is a post Oats conference member, and who, uh, he, he will also join my group at Hokkaido University from next April. And he said, okay, then let's try the reactivity of cationic cobalt-3. And actually, the cobalt C, uh, CPCL cobalt-3 complexes were well known and, and reported more than 30 years ago. But uh, no one uh, used such uh, complexes for catalytic CH functionalization. So anyway, we started the project. And Dr. Yoshino found that cp cobalt 3 was indeed useful as an alternative to cp rhodium 3 And the reaction of 2-phenylpyridine with imine proceeds nicely. And, after in, and we reported in 2013. And then we further expanded the utility of this catalyst to uh, C2 selective CH functionalizations of indoles to imines. So the reaction proceeds at C2 position, so it's different from Friedel Krauss type reactions. But strictly speaking, uh, these initial two reports are not uh, the first example. I mean, these reactions have already been established with rhodium 3 catalysts. So from scientific point of view, uh, it's simply the replacement of precious rhodium metal to cobalt. So it's not good enough. So I think we should do something additional with first row transition metals. So our next target is, was the explorations of CP cell cobalt specific reactions. So to start that, we check the properties of cobalt and rhodium in detail, and because Professor uh, Bill Jones reported the detailed structure of Roda cycles in 2008. So we synthesized the analogous cobalt cycles and compared its structures and estimated the atomic charge by natural population analysis. And it clearly indicated that cobalt is more cationic and more Lewis acidic. And uh, cobalt carbon bond is more polarized and the carbon is more anionic, so should be more nucleophilic towards polar functional groups. So then uh, Mr. Ikemoto in my group designed the, this, such, these reactions. We imagine that if the cobalt uh, activates CH bond of indoles and then insertion to alkyne proceeds, it generates the alkenyl cobalt intermediate. And if the reaction ends up with the proto demethylations, it affords the alkenylated products. It's same as the rhodium case, as reported by Professor Fanius. But if this is a very strong nucleophile, it may react with a poorly electrophilic carbamoid group, this group, to generate pyroroindron cores. And because uh, this is a very important structure core, so it's worth for trying. So we started our studies, starting from the simple alkylation reactions. Unfortunately, in the initial trial in entry one, with cobalt catalyst alone, no reaction proceeded. Even the alkylation reaction did not proceed. But fortunately, when adding the potassium acetate to, uh, as an additive, the reaction proceeds nicely, and we got product in 90% 90, 90 yield. So uh, this is, an kind of cooperative catalyst, I think. And to get more insight into the role of potassium acetate, uh, we performed the HD exchange experiments in the presence of deutylated methanol. Under the optimized reaction conditions, uh, clearly the HD exchange proceeds at only at C2 positions. On the other hand, uh, in the absence of potassium acetate with cobalt alone, uh, the reaction, uh, this catalyst behaves something like a simple Lewis acid, like a scandium triflate, and HD exchange proceeds at only C3 positions. So the potassium acetate was very important. 
And to further gain insight, uh, we asked uh, our collaborators, Professor Sakata at Hoshi Farm University, who is a collaborator as of act Sheep program. And he clarified that acetate base is very important uh, for the CH activation step, uh, like this or this. And uh, we propose that acetate-assisted concerted methylation deprotonation process is a key in our catalysis. So let's uh, go back to the reactions. Uh, our reaction target is not the alkenylation reactions, but we have to change, switch the reaction from here to there. So to get this compound, it's necessary to prevent the intermolecular protonation with acetic acid and also uh, maybe some modifications of this carbon uh, reactivity and leaving ability was necessary. So we modify the reaction conditions by changing the concentrations, the amount of base, temperatures. Then we got the desired product as a major product, B, uh, compound B was obtained. And finally, by changing the directing group, we got the compound B, cyclized compounds, as uh, more than 70% yield. And this is a very important uh, control experiment tried with rhodium catalyst. We tried a variety of catalyst reaction conditions with acid or a base uh, like this with different directing groups, but we never observed uh, the compound B, cyclized compound with rhodium catalyst. So uh, definitely uh, this reaction uh, is specific to uh, cobalt. I have no time to talk in detail about the substrate scope, but details are reported in this year's Jack's papers, and so I will skip it. And recently, uh, further applications of cobalt catalysts are rapidly expanding, not only by us, but other chemists in the world. And uh, we have we reported the second generation cobalt catalyst uh, 2014 uh, for these reactions, and then other chemists like uh, Professor Elman in USA, Professor Glorious and Ackerman in Germany, and Professor sukbok Chan in Korea trying to follow us. So it's really nice that we have started uh, to use this catalyst and others trying to follow us. So now, even a functionalized substrate like this can be applicable under the cobalt catalysis. So uh, it's really nice. But still, uh, we have something to do. For example, the uh, enantioselective reaction using cobalt catalyst remains unsolved. So it's our next target. Lastly, uh, I'd like to thank the Professor uh, Kanai uh, for his very uh, kind support during the last five years. And I also would like to thank Professor Sakata for the DFT calculations. And I really, really uh, like to thank uh, my talented teams in University of Tokyo and I also would like to thank financial support from JSD, the JSPS, and the other uh, foundation uh, listed here uh, for their support. And thank you for your kind attention. Thank you for a nice talk about CP Star. Uh,